Well, hello there. I'm Linda V. Taylor, and welcome to the Best of Both Worlds. Freehand fun today, so stay tuned. Today I'm so excited to show you how I'm going to quilt an antique quilt that I bought at the um, IQA quilt market. And um, I'm going to be using some tools, doing some freehand, and first of all I'll be stabilizing the quilt. So let's get started with that stabilizing. In loading this quilt, I am not stitching across the top of the quilt because you can see from the shot right here that the border has quite a bit of extra fullness in it because it's an antique quilt but that can happen with any quilt so it's more important to me to get the seam between the border and the body of the quilt straight as you can see the corner is really dog-eared here but we can handle that and I want to show you how we're going to do that so I'm going to start right there on that seam and put my channel lock on. And um, now as I start moving the machine, I'm going to adjust the quilt so that I will stay right in that seam. And if I need to adjust the quilt, I will. I'm just kind of push it up or down. I need to pull it up a little bit there and just go slow because this setup is so important for us to get um, to make sure that this is straight and then we can deal with all the extra fullness in there you see I'm just going to kind of hold it there as I move it across the machine is locked in the horizontal position so I know it's straight and this is taking me a little time, but I'll go all the way across and you'll see that that seam is going to be perfectly straight. Then I can deal with the top. As you can see, there is a lot of extra fullness in this border. And I mean, I could take a, a tuck in here if I wanted to, but I think I can ease that in and I will show you how I'm going to do that. What I am doing now is pushing behind, and I don't have a plate on, of course, it's just my machine here making sure this is up all the way and I'm pushing behind. I have about eight stitches to the inch and I'm also making sure that I stay within that quarter inch or eighth inch at the top so that when it gets bound that line won't show at all. And this way we can ease all of that extra in and also remember as you quilt it it's going to get taken up. But I know people worry about those borders, and I expect them on all the antique quilts. Um, this one isn't as bad as many of the antique quilts that I've seen. But this happens 
probably more frequently than we'd like, but we can handle it because we're going to quilt it. But getting this, direct, this between the border and the body is very important that you get that really, really straight. And using that channel lock is going to be the key. And I think I am going to take just a little bit of a tuck right here. And I'm going to lift that up so that you can see it again. You see how it's, it's, there's quite a bit of fullness there? And that makes this not as dark. See, if, it, if I come out here like this, this is really going to be dog-eared and get cut off, and that seems crooked. So I'm just going to move this over like that. And I will be doing freehand here. If I wasn't, I could just come down here and top stitch this one seam. No one would ever notice that at all. Or if that bothers you, then you could just whip that down by hand real easily. But um, I think I can just catch that in my free hand. So now we're ready to start stabilizing. We need to go around every single bit of applique and even the rickrack to secure all of this, um, to stabilize this quilt. If you need to use the ruler because these are all diagonal, then you just put that in there like that. I'm in 16 stitches to the inch with regulated. Now I can go around that freehand, but you can also use a little tool. You can go like that, and then you can switch it like that. So you're gonna find what works best for you, and then you use your other one here. Here we go like that. Now as I got going on that I was using my tools um, but eventually I just put my handles down like that and um, I found that if I just think of a half of a circle I can do this freehand. These diagonals are still a little bit difficult but um, if you're having trouble you can still use that straight ruler. This handwork um, on this antique quilt is, I think, very well done, probably for the 30s, and it's close, it's really pretty. And then up, and so I just continued around like that. It took me about an hour to stabilize this quilt, which is 86 by 76, to um, go all around it. Now, of course, we have to finish our borders as well. And um, I'm going to show you how to do that. Now you can see I'm doing the bottom half of this block of this applique. That's because I really like to sit down. I could do the entire block um, if, I, if I stood up because my machine is certainly big enough for me to do that. So I just divided these in half so that I could continue to sit down. I like to sit down as I'm stitching um, it's because so I don't get so tired and I can stitch longer, quilt longer. So I divide this into two, even though if I was standing up I could do the whole thing at once. But um, And by the way, these are the micro handles that you can get to put on your machine if you like to be close to your stitching like this. And boy, are they handy. I mean, you can hand, hold on to them any way you like. I like just to really have a light touch um, and just kind of rest my fingers on them like that. All right, and that completed um, that part that I needed to do. And now we'll start working on some of the other areas. First of all, I want to finish. I left at the top, I left the border so I can show you what I've done on the border. And it is so quick and easy, you're going to love it. I decided in this border, because I'm planning to do some really fancy things in this quilt. Oh, it's so exciting. I, I can't wait to show you what I'm going to be doing. But I decided to do um, a, quite a plain border. Um, I guess if you'd call this plain, what I'm doing is like used. You see, I tuck in on the side, swing out, and then I tuck in on the side. And I'm doing this in constant. You could vary the sizes of these. I'm trying to keep them about the same.
And we're going to go down and just keep doing this until I get to my tape. I've already taped where I want this center of this and I will change direction at that point. I am sewing in constant at 55. I know people always want to know what I'm sewing at, but you could certainly do this in regulated as well. But I think if you'll just try constant, you'll see how fun it is. And what I'm watching is the sides and my seam line over here. I want to make sure that I, that I meet with that. I recommend two hands. I'm, I'm doing it one-handed, but um, I think it's easy with two hands. And I am standing up for this because I can really put my whole body into it. Now, you can see I'm hitting the first tape mark I have, and um, that's not the one that I need to worry about right now. That's the one that I'm going to worry about when I get down here. I'm going to keep going with this design because I know the middle of this quilt is about right here. And I wanted to have a really cool design in the middle. So I'm going to keep going to my second tape mark. If you can do a border in like three minutes, hello. And it's so beautiful. This shows up in a very busy fabric too because it's so repetitive. You get the texture. Now I'm hitting my other tape mark. So when I go back over here, usually I will just swing over and make a design right there. But I'm, I wanted this one to be longer. So I'm going to come back over here. And now I'm going to watch right in the middle of these. And I'm going to cross each one. I'm still doing my U's exactly like I did them before but I'm watching there in the middle, cross, come back down, cross, come back down. Crossing both directions, so this way I cross, this way I cross. So I'm getting those cool elliptical shapes in the middle there like that. And that is all the way across the middle. I love it. I mean, you could do the whole border like this and have it cross on all of it. And that'll be my last one there. And now I'm back into my U's. And I'm gonna come all the way over to the corner. If you remember, that corner um, is a different color. It's yellow, it's a corner set. Once your machine gets into this motion, it just wants to do it. You just think of a half a circle. Do not um, straighten this out. You really want to think of a U as you're coming across. Clear over on the side. Go clear over on the side. Clear over on the side. And you remember, we used our channel lock when we made that line, so we know that's very straight, and this quilt's going to be square. So exciting. You know, I love the colors on this when I bought it. I bought it in Houston uh, at the quilt market. And I know I have to launder it because I think there's some things that I can get out of it because it does have some marks on it. But wait till you see what I am going to do on this quilt. I'd love to meet the maker of this quilt. I'm coming over here now. And now I'm going to go right into a large pinwheel, leaving enough space to get out. Just kind of aiming for the middle of that as I come out. And while I'm in these corners, I'm just going to go ahead and finish those off and make sure that that corner set is totally stitched. And now I'll get back into my U's. And you can see on the sides, as I was stabilizing, 
I continue to do the U's because they're really easy. And so now my border is finished all the way around. And that is just an, a wonderful way to take up all the extra fullness that we knew was in that border as well because it's really good heavy quilting. Um, not real, real tight, but makes a beautiful, beautiful repetitive design. Sometimes you have to stand back and look at the quilt, and when I did that, I could see that around these orange leaves, um, there's kind of a square there. And so I decided to just treat that as a square. And I wanted um, to do something special around the brown uh, tips that kind of look like cattails or something to me. And so I decided to do a feather in there. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to do this in regulated. I have 16 stitches to the inch. And you could certainly mark this if you need to. I am going to use the basically the shapes on the quilt as my markings. So I'm going to do a little teardrop um, up right there and over here sort of like a little bow tie, and over here, and over here. And then I'm going to do um, feathers. So I'm coming over to that seam, and this is the uh, stacked feather. And I don't want to make them too wide. I'm coming over to that seam again, so let's talk about how I'm doing that. I'm coming around, and then I trace back, and then I come over. And I'll follow that seam in there just a little bit like that. And kind of make another feather in there like that. And then around, retrace, back. Don't worry, I'm going to keep doing these. Now when I get into this area, I want to go all the way down to the end. So I'm just doing sort of those U's. And I'm going to just follow my line here. And again, you could use a template for that as I come around here, and I'll start right here, coming over to that center seam, and back, and down. And what that has done is making that brown applique look absolutely wonderful. It looks like um, these are coming out from behind them. And as we come back into this area close to that applique, you are getting some depth and um, texture in there that makes it look really awesome. Now again, I have to stay close to my applique as I come out, and I can find myself right down here through the middle and come right here. There we go. And I'm just doing this all the way around in this area, only to the middle of uh, where those orange and you could mark those right here, the middle of where those oranges sort of come together. There we go. And you'll, you know, you just get kind of feathered out by the time you get in here. That's why you're just going to do use to fill this in. Oh, this is going to look so good on the back, too. And then I follow that applique right back out, right down to here, and again, Start in and continue to come around. I'm going to use two hands now. All the way back. I can go faster if I'm using the two hands. I also want to make sure that you know how to do that stacked feather, so we'll pay more attention on this next one. So I come out and around, and I have to retrace the tip of it, and then I make another one like that. Out and around, retrace the tip, and then back. Every time you come out, and every time you go back, you're doing another feather. Right on the side of that. My suggestion, um, especially if you're a beginner, is that while you're doing something like this, don't go on to another technique 
until you have finished all of these on the quilt because when you're doing something like this, you're paying attention to every little detail and how you're doing it. And if you move on to something else and you come back, you oftentimes get kind of mixed up. Maybe that would never happen to you, but it sure happens to me. So, you know, I'm gonna go along and finish all of these on my quilt before I move on to the next technique. Oops, I got talking and forgot that I'm coming back. There we go, following that back through. And then around, I only have two more of these and then we can see how beautiful this is. It's again, that repetitive design. So that's gonna be really awesome on there. And I can tell you right now, I am definitely going to want to uh, do something on that applique. This is really raising the applique on up from the quilt and you can see that I'm getting some a little bit of distortion in the applique so that's gonna have to be nailed down so we'll have fun doing that and then this is my last one sometimes when you're doing a quilt in fact most of the time I'll just be honest with you that's when you get your inspiration it's it's fun to draw ahead of time and kind of have an idea where you're going but as you get on the quilt don't be afraid to change your mind or to do something that comes to your mind. You go, oh, okay, this is actually better than I thought. I think the quilt really does inspire you. And I can stop up here without going back to the center because I am done with this part of the block. This next little block really has a lot of fullness after I've stabilized it here. You can see all this extra fullness. I don't want that to, to scare you especially on an antique quilt, but on any quilt, this can happen, okay? And so watch as I do my design, it's just gonna um, just like draw it up because the quilt shrinks as we quilt. So we don't have to worry about that. All of that fullness has disappeared and it is just flat. And any fullness that's left is going to raise the feathers up and make it look kind of trapunto y look. So all of that concern that we might have is gone. And I just love the way these look around um, these brown, this brown applique. Um, and you may have noticed, I, it doesn't matter to me if my feathers meet up exactly, if I have more on one side than the other. This is freehand. But if you wanted them to, to be exactly the same, you certainly could do that or even mark them. Thank you so much for joining me today. In the next segment, I'll be finishing this antique quilt. So don't miss it. See you next time.